Well, hello everyone. Thank you for joining us during your lunch hour for this public scoping meeting for the Little Egbert Multi-Benefit Project. My name is Lori Price. I work for the Department of Water Resources and I am acting as the lead CEQA coordinator for the project. Hi everyone, I'm Morgan O'Brien and I'm a senior engineer with the California Department of Water Resources and am serving as project manager for DWR on the Little Egbert Multi-Benefit Project. I'm glad you all could join us today. Thank you for your time. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> so here's our agenda for today's meeting. We will cover the purpose of today's meeting, where the project is located, what we are proposing for the project, and we will explain the environmental uh, process and the overall project timeline. And following the presentation, there will be an opportunity for you all to provide comments on the project. Next slide. Today's meeting is being recorded and will be posted on our project website. Closed captioning has been enabled for the meeting. You can turn the captions on and off by clicking the CC icon on the Zoom taskbar at the bottom of your screen. You will have an option to provide comments and ask questions at the end of the presentation. During this time, if you would like to make a comment, please use the raise hand feature to join the queue. You can find a raise hand button on the Zoom taskbar at the bottom of your screen. You can also find the raise hand button next to your name in the participants window. If you hover over your name, you can click and raise your hand to speak. If you've dialed into the meeting, you can use the raise hand feature by dialing star nine. When it's your turn to speak, you can unmute by dialing star six. We will take public comment in the order of raised hands of the participants. When it's your turn to provide a comment, we will call on you and you will be able to unmute to share your comment. Until that time, you will remain muted. Your verbal comments will be recorded. Therefore, when you comment, please begin by sharing your name and if applicable, also the name of your organization. If you would prefer, questions and comments can also be submitted using the chat function. We will address your questions following the presentation portion of the meeting. Comments in the chat will be recorded. If you need technical assistance during the meeting, please send a direct chat to Sabrina Washington with DWR via the Zoom chat window. To send a direct chat, click the blue button that says everyone and select Sabrina Washington, and then you can type your question. Next slide. So our intent for this meeting is to provide a respectful space to ensure that all participants can fairly and clearly ask questions and share ideas comments and concerns on the proposed project. During the public comment portion of the meeting, we may need to impose a three minute comment time limit to ensure that all comments can be heard. Um, and if you have additional comments that are not able to be heard during today's meeting, you can always submit those uh, written comments via mail or email. Uh, next slide. So uh, why are we meeting today? Next slide. <clears throat> this meeting is being held consistent with the California Environmental Quality Act, CEQA, statute and guidelines. The purpose of the meeting is to share information on the proposed project and hear comments on the scope and focus of the environmental review. DWR is the CEQA lead agency for the Little Egbert Multi-Benefit Project. As CEQA lead, DWR must consider opportunities to avoid or mitigate the impacts of a project and identify project alternatives. We are also obligated to facilitate public review, consult with Native American tribes, and notify the responsible and trustee agencies that may have permit or approval authorities or interests in the project. DWR filed a notice of preparation for the Little Egbert project on June 13th with the Office of Planning and Research which can be found at the first link shown on the slide. The notice of prep is also available on DWR's public webpage in the public notices section. 
The posting of the NOP started the public scoping period, which is a 45 day public scoping period that will close on July 28th. During this period, DWR is soliciting input from the public, Native American tribes, and other agencies on the environmental setting, potential environmental impacts, mitigation measures to reduce environmental impacts, and alternatives to the proposed project. Your comments will help to inform the environmental impact report that will be prepared for the project. You can submit comments by mail, email, or during the scoping meetings. Details on how to submit written comments will be provided later in the meeting and are also included in the notice of preparation. All comments will be recorded and documented in a scoping report, which will be appended to the draft EIR. Next slide. Thank you, Lori. The proposal of the Lake Work Project has three main overarching objectives. First, the proposed project aims to enhance public safety with respect to flood capacity in the Yellow Bypass and surrounding areas. Second, to protect and enhance natural ecosystem processes to increase natural habitat and support native species to create a healthier and more self-sustaining ecosystem for the North Delta area. Lastly, the proposed project hopes to protect and enhance opportunities for recreation in the local region for people interested in getting outside in the Rio Vista area and Solano County regions. region. How DWR is performing the CEQA analysis because we've determined that these improvements may result in potentially significant effects on the physical environment. To start, I'd like to talk about where we are in our river system. Next slide, please. Where we are, next slide. <laughs> the proposed project is located in the southern end of the Yolo Bypass, immediately upstream of the city of Rio Vista in Solano County, California. The site includes state plan of flood control levees maintained by Reclamation District 536 on the west and Solano County Water Agency on the south for the melon levee. The site is lined by farm berms and levees on the southwest and along Cache Slough, which makes up the northern and eastern sides of the project site, a restricted height levee is maintained by Reclamation District 2084. The southeastern part of the project is co-located with State Highway 84. The site is located downstream of the confluence of Lindsay Slough, Prospect Slough, Cash Slough, and the Sacramento River Deep Water Ship Channel. And this area is commonly referenced as the Cash Slough Complex. Near the south end of the site, Cash Slough combines with the Sacramento River and Steamboat Slough. Highway 84 and the Cache Slough Real McCoy Ferry Landing are also located at the southern end of the project, as you can see in the figure on the right. The proposed project is located in the legal Sacramento San Joaquin River Delta per Water Code Section 12220. The site itself is approximately 3,150 acres large, and the habitat area is currently estimated to take up just under 3,000 acres, 3,000 of those acres, pardon me. There's approximately 5.2 miles of levee along the eastern side of the project site. We are currently partnering with the Little Egbert Joint Powers Agency to explore this project as well as engaging with local landowners, interested parties, and local government ent entities. Next slide, please. Now I'd like to talk a little bit about what's happening, what we're proposing for the project itself. Next slide, please. What are our goals for the project, you ask? Well, there are many. To achieve the proposed Egbert multi-benefit project objectives, the team has developed project goals, which could include degrading portions of the existing restricted height levy along Cache Slough and constructing inflow and outflow openings along Cache Slough to connect the floodplain and improve water conveyance during flood events. Another goal is aimed at improving and or repairing the existing state plan of flood control levies and other local infrastructure. 
uh, as, oh, as well as flood features to accommodate increased on-site flows. We'll also be looking into grading and placing fill material to construct subtitle swales, wave break islands, and habitat berms to provide native habitat for fish. We'll be studying the potential to revegetate the site with native trees, shrubs, and marsh plant species to restore and enhance upland, tidal, subtidal, and wetland habitat. And lastly, the proposed project may provide new or enhanced opportunities for recreation consistent with the flood protection and habitat restoration goals. Next slide, please. The project is currently in the feasibility phase, and that portion will be wrapping up this summer. The team has done a lot of work, and it's uh, looking really promising as far as the options that we have to consider. The proposed project currently has a number of features under consideration that include levee rehabilitation to address past performance concerns and to bring the levee up to current design standards for bypass levee. The levee team, the design team is looking at creating levee breaches at the north and south ends, along with what we're calling balance breaches between those two to allow for higher tide waters to enter the site uh, between those north and south breaches. The site will require significant grading within the proposed project in order to create the various types of habitats that are being discussed. The habitat islands that you see in this uh, mock-up are a big high value windbreak benefit uh, feature for the, the very wide site that we have and allow for additional habitat areas to be more naturally occurring throughout the 3000 acre habitat site. There are a wide range of habitats being considered for this project, including upland riparian zones, tidal marsh, subtidal vegetated areas, and subtidal deep habitat space. There are features within the proposed project which will need to be replaced, including a tide gate along the levee alignment, which allows for drainage of the Watson Hollow Slough, as well as provides irrigation water to landowners behind the RD 536 levee. The project team is currently looking at all of the options as a part of the feasibility study, and that information will feed the CEQA analysis and other design efforts to support CEQA. With that, I will hand it back over to Lori. Next slide, please. As Morgan mentioned, one of our project goals is to restore and enhance a mosaic of native habitats on the site. As we develop alternatives, one focus of the design is based on providing ecological benefits for sensitive species in the Delta. Restoring tidal inundation and creating subtitle and tidal aquatic habitats is expected to provide refugia, spawning areas, and foraging and rearing habitat for species such as delta smelt, long fin smelt, salmonids, and green sturgeon. Construction of the upland habitat berms and riparian vegetation plantings would provide shaded riverine aquatic habitat for native fish, as well as upland refugia for giant garter snake and resting places for raptors. So increasing and enhancing the abundance of these habitat types would contribute to the diversity and connectivity of these habitats throughout the Delta. Next slide. Based on the CEQA environmental checklist and our preliminary evaluations, DWR has identified that the proposed um, improvements could have the following direct, indirect, and or cumulative environmental effects. All of the topics listed on this slide will be studied in the environmental impact report that will be prepared for the project. If you have concerns regarding any of these topics or thoughts about additional topics that are not listed that you would like to see addressed in the EIR, please let us know by submitting your comments. Next slide. And so what is next in our environmental process? Uh, next slide. DWR is hosting three public scoping meetings throughout the 45-day scoping period. 
We will be hosting a second virtual meeting this Thursday, June 29th from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. We will also have an in-person meeting in Rio Vista down near the project site on Tuesday, July 11th from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. at the Veterans Memorial Building. All of these meetings will have the same format with a presentation provided at the beginning of the meeting, followed by time for receiving public comments. Next slide. This graphic depicts the process for completing an environmental impact report and selecting a project alternative. Essentially, the environmental process contains three phases, the scoping phase, preparation of the draft EIR, and preparation of the final EIR and selection of the alternative. We are currently in the scoping phase, which was initiated on June 13th with the filing of the Notice of Preparation. This phase is all about collecting information on the existing conditions and potential impacts and hearing from you about what environmental issues you would like to see addressed in the environmental document. Following the close of the scoping period, DWR will confirm the issues to be investigated and then move forward with preparing the environmental impact report. Once the draft EIR is ready, it will be circulated for public review and we will hold more public meetings to receive additional comments. After the close of that public, public comment period, we will prepare written responses to the comments received make revisions to the document, and then select a project alternative and certify the EIR. Next slide. Thank you, Lori. So the current estimate of the project timeline, assuming an action alternative is the result of the CEQA analysis, is as follows. We are currently, as uh, Lori said in the scoping phase of both CEQA and the project, and we will be going into a draft public, uh, a public draft of, draft of the EIR in summer 2024. The final EIR is planned to be complete at the end of 2024 and provided that an action alternative is recommended, the design and permitting effort is estimated to last at least a year, and then constructing this size of a project will likely take about three construction seasons. Next slide, please. First, we thank you very much for joining us today and for your time spent to learn more about the proposed project with us. The project will be open for comments until July 28th. We also thank you in advance for your help ensuring early identification of issues related to implementation of the proposed Little Egbert multi-benefit project. Commenters will automatically be added to the proposed project's email list, so keep an eye out for future information coming via email if you comment. If you are interested in getting project information but don't have a comment, you can also ask to be added to the email without comment. Simply email our project email or write the request in the chat box, please. Written comments from interested parties are invited to ensure the full range of issues related to implementation of the proposed project is identified early in the CEQA process. Agencies, organizations, Native American tribes, and other interested parties should provide contact name and contact information in their letters, please. In accordance with CEQA guidelines, section 15082B1B, within 30 days of receiving the NOP, responsible and trustee agencies shall provide DWR with specific detail about the scope and content of the environmental information to be included in the draft EIR related only to the agency's area of statutory responsibility. But as a heads up, our scoping period is 45 days, and instead of the one scoping meeting as required by CEQA, we are doing three. And this is in order or in an effort to ensure people who want to attend and have an interest in the project are able to. If you know of another entity, person, or organization that might be interested, please share your pro our project contact information with them. I'll show that on the next slide. 
within written comments uh, on the scope of the EIR must be received by DWR no later than 5 p.m. on July 28th. Comments and questions should be sent to the address shown here on the slide, which is also listed uh, in the NOP and is posted online. If you want to send a comment in via email, please send that to little Egbert MBP, which stands for multi-benefit project at water.ca.gov with the subject heading little Egbert multi-benefit project NOP. Uh, the, ver the both oral and written comments will be accepted during these virtual meetings, as well as the in-person meeting on July 11th in Rio Vista. Next slide, please. Right, and next we, we wanna hear from you. If you have any questions, comments regarding the project, you are welcome to get in contact with Lori or I at the project email, which is littleegbertmbp at water.ca.gov. Project updates and information can be found at the DWR Little Egbert Multi-Benefit Project website at water.ca.gov forward slash Little Egbert, or at our local partner, the Little Egbert Joint Powers Agency or LegFuzz website at lejpa.org. Next slide, please. Now I would like to open the floor for public comments. And as a quick reminder, based on attendance and the number of questions we have, we will be using a three, three minute timer. Also, before you comment, please remember to introduce yourself with your name and organization or relation to the project. And uh, do we know who we'll be hearing from first? Good afternoon. Um, I don't see anyone in the chat or in the queue, so um, perhaps we can give everyone a few moments to collect their thoughts and questions before raising their hand. That's great. If you would like for us to return to a particular slide, please let us know. Yeah, uh, I'd like to comment. I'm just having a little problem with Zoom, if you can hear me. Yeah, is that you, Misty? No, this is Ned. Oh, Ned. Hi, Ned. Yeah, can you hear me all right? Yeah. Okay, just a couple of things. I just noticed on your, um, it was on your PowerPoint slide, and it's also on one of the bullets under potential environmental effects. It says here that the, uh, bullet called hazards and hazardous materials. The proposed project is located within two miles of a municipal airport, which necessitates evaluation of impacts to people working and residing in the area. Um, that just seems to be an erroneous uh, objective there. You know, I think in this case, what uh, the project should be evaluating is the impacts to aviation safety, the impacts to aircraft, the bird strikes that could uh, potentially bring down an airplane with passengers and pilots in it, and then perhaps potentially you know crashing into a nearby neighborhood or in, in water. So I think that statement in the, uh, that you have in there uh, should be reworded. And a couple other things too. Um, we, you know, I'm representing the airport, Solano Airport Land Use Commission. We will be providing uh, comments in the formal letter uh, before the end of the period here. But so, that, uh, you know, I'm right now. I'm just verbally mentioning some comments that I've noticed, uh, some errors or assumptions that I've noticed as well. The the other thing too, uh, we have reached out. Uh, to Eric Meiji and his team, and ESA team on a wildlife hazards analysis and provided some very early comments uh, on a wildlife hazards analysis. We have not heard back. Um, so any kind of uh, you know, information you can provide today on, on the next steps on those, uh, on that technical document, um, that would be helpful and useful at this point. Um, 
And and then you know, and obviously, uh, along with the wildlife hazards analysis uh, report, I mean, if you could explain perhaps how a project intends or fore foresees or anticipates um, addressing these uh, aviation safety concerns um, due to the proximity of the, the Rio Vista Airport. And I also have questions about how deep, you know, water, how deep your, uh, the, the water is on, on the site, to the open water depth, uh, you know, what, what, how deep or how shallow they are. If you have any information on that, that'd be helpful as well. And the various types of uh, habitat that is in very close proximity to the airport. I measured it this morning. It's, the edge of the, the runway is about 2,900 feet to the uh, closest property line, a little Aberg. Um, you know, it's in the various uh, safety zones. I can list them all here for everyone, if anyone's interested. But the bottom line is um, it, it is in very close proximity to a functioning airport and an airport that actually provides support of the Travis Air Force Base. So we're very concerned about that. And, it's, um, and you know, it's under the assault landing zone, or oh, the assault landing zone uh, for the Travis Air Force Base is, or uh, oh, the site is under that assault landing zone. Um, it's in also compatibility zone D, and then within Rio Vista Airport, there's at least three or four safety, um, Compatibility zones that it falls under the turning zone, the inner and outer approach zone. Um, you know, within within an area that uh, is prohibited. So, I, you know, like I said, I'll follow up with with a letter. But any kind of discussion today would be helpful. Um, Ned, may I ask uh, for the record, would you mind stating your first and last name? You mentioned you were with the Solano Airport Land Use Commission. Yeah, Nesline Ferrario, um, N-E-D-Z-L-E-N-E-F-E-R-R-A-O. -E -E I work for Solano County, but I'm representing the Solano uh, County Airport Land Use Commission. Today. Thank you. Sorry to cut you off, Morgan. Yeah. No, that's okay. I believe that um, we are able to hear your um, comment today, but it does sound like we will be following up. Okay, that's good. I guess that's yeah. hopeful. We'll look forward to getting your letter and thank you for putting that all together. Um, we also have uh, Alex Rabidou with uh, Solano County Water Agency in the queue. I apologize if I mispronounced your last name. Yeah, yeah, no, that's great. Uh, so my name is Alex Rabideau with the Solano County Water Agency, and, and really wanted to highlight, you know, fairly concisely uh, four concerns that we have. Uh, one being on flood control, our agency is the local maintaining agency uh, of the Mellon Levy, which sits at the very south end of the uh, of the project. So we certainly have concerns uh, both for the water agency as well as to the city of Rio Vista. Uh, we also have concerns with and this would deal with sort of water quality and ESA impacts to the North Bay Aqueduct, uh, which is just right above the project, uh, as well as with our member agencies, the city of Vallejo uh, and RD 2068. Uh, we, we all have, you know, essentially municipal and agricultural intakes, uh, you know, collectively in the region and certainly have some concerns or, or, or again, some thoughts for some of the analysis for the EIR. Uh, the, the other kind of the last two comments are really dealing with cumulative impacts. Uh, so one of our, you know, again, one of our concern is, again, we certainly know the Lookout Slough project is, is in the neighborhood. Um, Lower Yolo, um, or, you know, your ranch was a project done a couple of years back. Prospect Island is on the docket as well. And so we're collectively just think that some attention is needed on really cumulative impacts, both from an ESA uh, impact as well as certainly from a flood impact as well. And then lastly, I think it's, you know, sort of also tying into cum cumulative impacts. Uh, certainly know the Westerbelt and GPA folks are also looking at the uh, cash flow mitigation bank, which is right on the south end, uh, adjacent to both the Little Egbert multi-benefit project, 
uh, but also right next to the water agency's uh, melon levy uh, flood control uh, levy. And so we're just concerned, again, these are things that probably warrant some attention, uh, some you know technical thought as, as the EIR is being scoped and looked at. So again, just wanted to share those comments and, and appreciate the time to share those. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. I really appreciate your comments. If anyone would like to uh, raise their hand, the queue is now open. Well, you are all so welcome to share our comments if you would like us to return to a particular slide so that you can um, look and think further, you're welcome to, but this does conclude the presentation for the CEQA scoping meeting. Um, if you would like to continue to ponder, you're welcome to stay on, but this does conclude the presentation. <laughs> and, and we will be on until two o'clock as as advertised <laughs> um <clears throat>
We are not seeing any more public comments. So that concludes our first public scoping meeting for the Little Egbert Multi-Benefit Project. Our next virtual public scoping meeting is on Thursday, June 29th from 9 to 11 a.m. We will also be at the Veterans Memorial Building in Rio Vista on July 11th from 6 to 8 p.m. Again, the deadline to submit public comments on the project is July 28th by 5 p.m. Comments may be mailed or emailed. Thank you so much for joining us today.